On September 18th, a Cirrus SR-20 Victor Hotel Tango Echo Lima flying a navigational exercise crashed about 4 p.m. local time near Bradenwood, New South Wales, Australia, fatally injuring the sole occupant, the pilot. From filed flight plan data and ADSB tracking, it appears this pilot planned a round-robin flight from Bankstown and returning to Bankstown. Let's call in Mark Waddell now, our Dean of Aviation Safety, with the details. Mark? Thanks, Chuck. On September 18, 2025, an SR-20 crashed into the side of a mountain near Braidwood, New South Wales, Australia, killing the pilot, who was the sole occupant. According to authorities, the pilot had rented the aircraft from the Bankstown Flying School. The aircraft was a Cirrus Design Corp SR-20 that was manufactured in 2014. The flight departed Bankstown Airport at about 11.13 a.m. local time, with the intended destination returning to Bankstown. The flight plan the pilot filed would have taken about four hours burning 50 gallons of fuel, depending on the power setting. The aircraft at full fuel capacity carried 56 gallons. So this raises questions about the pilot's fuel planning and whether he might have been running low on fuel prior to the accident. The crash site is on a ridge line about 12 kilometers east of the Braidwood Percheron aircraft landing area. The last ADSB position for the aircraft was recorded at about 2.51 local time, just about three kilometers east of where the crash occurred. At that point, the aircraft had already been airborne for at least three hours, 38 minutes flight time. This map shows the last recorded ADSB position of the aircraft as it was heading west. The circle is a general area where the crash site's located. The ridge line is several hundred feet higher than the last recorded altitude that this aircraft was flying at. The crash site was in mountainous wooded terrain, which made it difficult to reach. And responders were first unable to reach the site due to that terrain as well as foggy conditions. The pilot Arthur Chan had been described as experienced. However, the Bankstown Flying School had posted that he returned to them in 2021 after a long period of not flying. His training and experience since then has not been reported. Authorities were notified shortly after 4 p.m. local time of an ELT that had activated, and search and rescue teams were launched by 4.30 p.m. According to the authorities, the pilot had set out on a navigational exercise heading to Malakuta, Victoria, on the border with New South Wales. Authorities uh, stated that they will be looking at the file flight plan versus what was actually flown on the day whether there were any changes made, and what may have led to those changes. This chart shows the aircraft from startup through taxi out until takeoff. The uh, time elapsed here is about 20 minutes. This is a map of the file flight route obtained from FlightAware overlaid on a four-flight map. The pilot took off at 11.13 a.m. local time proceeding southwestbound. The aircraft then made a series of turns before proceeding southeastbound toward the coast, climbing to 9,000 feet. It does not appear that at any point the pilot touched down to refuel the aircraft. The pilot then turned north, and his filed route would have followed the coast all the way back to Bankstown. Authorities are trying to piece together why the pilot began descending on his northbound leg. He also turned away from his planned route and began flying westbound, which raised questions about whether he might have been running low on fuel and was maybe seeking to divert to an airport where he could refuel the aircraft. There are also questions about the weather that he was confronting, whether clouds that were preventing him from continued VFR, and whether the pilot was instrument rated such that he could have continued in clouds with an instrument clearance. These are all open questions that uh, authorities need to look into. Cirrus publishes endurance tables for the SR-20. 
but it's important to note that this table does not take into account non-standard conditions or headwinds. This close-up of the ground track is confusing. Why did the pilot descend if he needed to cross these hills? And why was he maneuvering up and down in the valleys? Was he trying to pick his way through at low altitude? Were there low clouds that were preventing him from climbing higher? These are all open questions that the ATSB investigators are looking at. Visibility may have been a factor here. Authorities uh, reported that their rescue efforts were hampered due to fog in the area. In addition, our owners group became aware of other aircraft that had requested instrument flight clearance, possibly due to restricted visibility getting through that area. This accident reconstruction uses the ADSB track log data imported into Flystow. Note that the ground speed and the altitudes are approximations based on that ADSB data and are subject to confirmation and more precise analysis by investigating authorities. So at this point, the pilot has descended to approximately 2,000 foot cruise altitude. You can follow his general direction on the inset map on the lower left. The AGL number on the lower right under the altitude tape is above ground level. Uh, again, that is an approximation. At this point, the pilot is beginning a turn to the west. We still don't know where he was headed at this point. Uh, but it was in the general direction of Canberra, perhaps, uh, or perhaps another airport. Uh, the thinking here is he might have been diverting to refuel. The other thing uh, to note here, though, is if the conditions were foggy, he might not have been able to see the terrain ahead of him. At this point, the recorded flight data ended. There's a ridge line directly ahead of the pilot at this point that it's approximately at the same altitude and a second ridge line just beyond it that's several hundred feet higher. This is the approximate location where authorities identified the crash site. There's a question whether this aircraft had the optional terrain warning system offered by Cirrus. This is a depiction in another aircraft but it's a similar system using color-coded terrain in the screen on the right and you can see in this instance there's actually a terrain warning advising the pilot to pull up. What weather planning went into the flight? Did the pilot receive weather updates along the planned route? Was the aircraft running low on fuel? Did the pilot divert to try to find a place to land and refuel the plane? And had the pilot considered and briefed alternate plans in case he could not complete this flight plan as originally filed. The investigation continues. The ATSB expects to conclude its investigation early next year and publish a final report. Before concluding, allow me to express our deepest condolences to all family, friends, and colleagues of the pilot. Back to you, Chuck. Thanks, Mark. The initial reports have this SR-20 departing Bankstown at 11.13 a.m. local. Flight track data ends at 2.51 for an estimated elapsed time at about 3 hours and 40 minutes. DLT was first heard about an hour later at 4 p.m. Flown as planned, this was a round trip of over 500 nautical miles with flight time dependent on winds aloft. Further, there is no evidence from ADSB tracking that this pilot made a refueling stop. The crash site was many miles from the destination. Was this pilot searching for a refueling stop? It seems that poor weather obscuring visibility was in play. Reports from first responders were that they had trouble finding the crash site due to foggy conditions. There's much we don't know. It's in the hands of Australian authorities now to sort out. This video is part of COPA's Better, Safer Pilots Initiative. 
If you're interested in joining the Cirrus Owners and Pilots Association, learning more about Cirrus Embark or Cirrus Direct Training, you can find links in the show notes. I'm Chuck Cowley, and this has been First Takes.